Hello, this PowerPoint video shows seven geologic features visible from roads in the southern San Joaquin Valley of California. This video was prepared by Buena Vista Museum of Natural History and Science. We invite you to visit us at 1801 Chester Avenue in downtown Bakersfield, California. Please visit our website, www.buenavistamuseum.org. Buena Vista Museum is a 501c3 nonprofit institution. Information on this video is presented for the enjoyment of the public. Permission has been obtained to use copyrighted graphics and photos in this presentation, and all graphics and photos are attributed to the appropriate source. To understand the basics about subjects discussed in this video, you're encouraged to see Introduction to San Joaquin Valley Geology on the Buena Vista website or on YouTube. California possesses 11 major landform provinces, eight of which are outlined in black on this satellite image. This presentation will focus on seven features of the San Joaquin Valley portion of the Great Valley Province. All features are visible from public roadways. The next slide will show roadways within the green box on this map and locations of those seven features. The seven features to be discussed are the Kern Gorge Fault, Shark Tooth Hill, the Caliente Sand Dunes, Elk Hills, the McKittrick Thrust Fault and Tar Seeps, Landslides, and Wheeler Ridge. These are represented by light blue labels. Many features are at the edge of the valley because geologic complexities are more easily seen on untilled land. A few features must be observed from public roads adjacent to the five highways outlined in color. Please drive safely in traveling all roads. The youthful V-shaped Kern River Canyon, shown by the shaded area in the photo, formed as the Sierra Nevada mountains rose. The canyon abruptly ends where the river crosses the Kern Gorge Fault. This fault, represented by the dashed red line, is one of many that exist beneath the San Joaquin Valley, but few are represented by an abrupt landform change like the Kern Gorge Fault. Faults are planes of weakness where one block of rock breaks and moves up, down, or laterally relative to another block of rock. This fault, active for millions of years, has elevated the Sierra Nevada mountains thousands of feet relative to the San Joaquin Valley. Sediments were transported by the river from the mountains onto the valley floor where the steepness of the river, known as the river gradient, was lower. This closer view of the land with the gorge on the right shows the Sierra Nevada mountains on the upthrown, a rising block, bounding valley sediments of the downthrown or descending block. The red dotted line is the trace of the fault. The words upthrown and downthrown relate the sense of motion, which direction the rocks moved along the fault. This photo of a granite hill was taken at the entrance to the Kern River Canyon on Highway 178. You are looking at upthrown block rocks along the broken plane of weakness that is the Kern Gorge Fault. Fracture surfaces are alternately shaded light or dark. Can you see that the surfaces seem to dip off to the right at steep parallel angles? These reflected light surfaces polished smooth by abrasion are called slickensides. Slickensides is the anglicized translation of a German geologic term. The rocks that smoothed these surfaces are now hundreds or thousands of feet below ground. Northwest of the Kern Gorge Fault is the Shark Tooth Hill National Natural Landmark. This photo of the hill was taken from Alfred Harrell Highway, a road that parallels the Kern River on the south side. Shark Tooth Hill has a long and significant history in American paleontology. In 1853, Vertebrate fossils were first found and identified here. More than 140 species of animals dominated by marine vertebrates have been found in Middle Miocene, roughly 16 million year old sediments. A thin fossil bearing layer of rock 
known as the bone bed, has attracted paleontologists and fossil collectors since the 19th century discovery. Academic studies of the area are ongoing and have contributed greatly to the knowledge of fauna and flora. Pictured is a large mako shark tooth upper left and a man modeling sea lion teeth on the right. These fossils were collected outside the National Natural Landmark on privately owned land. This mural shows oceanic creatures whose body parts have been found in the Shark Tooth Hill area. Sharks, sea lions, dolphins, turtles, bony fishes, whales, and even birds and terrestrial animals called this area home. Staying on the east side of the San Joaquin Valley, we'll head south towards Caliente Creek. Highway 58 leading east from Bakersfield crosses an unremarkable linear ridge no more than 100 feet high before descending onto the floodplain of Caliente Creek. The ridge is shown in green on the geologic map. This well-vegetated ridge is composed entirely of sand, the remnant of Ice Age sand dunes. These two photos show the dunes. The dunes have long been a source of high quality sand used in Bakersfield. Exactly why these Ice Age dunes exist here is uncertain, but a likely explanation has to do with prevailing winds that brought sand down the San Joaquin Valley from northwest to southeast. As these winds climbed over the Tehachapi Mountains, they could not lift the sand, so sand collected next to the mountains. Dunes occupied the southeastern San Joaquin Valley adjacent to old lake beds, but nowhere else were they nearly as high. Because the dunes lie adjacent to Caliente Creek, the creek and its levees may have supplied some sand and influenced wind patterns. Elk Hills, our next geologic feature, lies on the west side of the San Joaquin Valley. On a clear day, Elk Hills outline can easily be seen from Bakersfield. The San Joaquin Valley is famous for surface anticlines. These are huge folds of the Earth's crust that breach the valley floor. One of the largest is Elk Hills, outlined in red on this satellite image. These hills stand out because they are not affected by agricultural activity. Elk Hills is actually multiple hills, the highest of which reaches over a thousand feet above the valley floor. Surface anticlines in the San Joaquin Valley are where oil and gas are naturally trapped underground. Elk Hills remains one of the top oil and gas fields in the United States. In 2015, it ranked 22nd in United States proven reserves of oil remaining in the ground. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, it has produced more than 1.4 billion barrels of oil and 2 trillion cubic feet of natural gas. Elk Hills also has a habitat conservation area of more than 8,000 acres. In this area, threatened and endangered species such as kangaroo rats, Lizards, owls, squirrels, foxes, and native plants are protected. A few miles west of Elk Hills is the town of McKittrick. This photo was taken along the combined highways 33 and 58, very close to the McKittrick tar pits. The red dashed line shows where the McKittrick thrust fault crosses the highway. Rock on the left side of the red line, diatomite, has been thrust to the northeast, to the right, over top of darker oil-filled sandstones. There is great complexity in how rocks have been folded and faulted on the west side of the San Joaquin Valley. This cross-section, or slice of the earth, shows a generalized geologic interpretation of the faulted and folded beds in the previous photo. The interpretation is complicated by a landslide off the Tim Bloor range that adds complexity. As you can see from the green arrows, oil is thought to have migrated out of deeper rock layers of the San Joaquin Valley. Diatomite formed a weak barrier to oil migration, but oil degraded into tar reached the surface over tens of thousands of years. A sign in the upper right shows the historical designation of the McKittrick tar seeps adjacent to highways 58 and 33. The photo below the sign shows layers of a paleo or fossil tar seep excavated for fossils. 
Fossil tar seeps are rare, but California possesses four fossil bearing seep areas, McKittrick, Maricopa, Rancho La Brea, and Carpinteria. Active seeps, such as the one pictured on the right, are much more common. When combined Highway 3358 was built in the 1920s, there was great concern the road base would not be competent due to oil and tar. But a deep road base was constructed and the highway remains. There were two periods of excavation of McKittrick fossil tar seeps, 1925 to 1927 and 1949. Fossil flora and fauna discovered there were 39,000 to 12,000 years old. The fossils indicated the area had a temperate environment at that time, with more rain than the meager six inches per year today. The remains of wolf, deer, sloth, horse, camel, saber-toothed cat, fox, bear, and many smaller creatures were found. Pictured in the upper left are jaws of wolves from the 1920s excavation pit. Fossil water beetles lower left are still found on the land surface. The McKittrick tar seep area is also distinctive because of its vegetation. The arid land underlain by nutrient poor soil has little plant variety. An introduced plant, saltbush, dominates the landscape, but saltbush cannot tolerate oil rich ground. Buckwheat, however, is able to live in the seep area. Dark bluish green stems of buckwheat allow it to visually stand out amongst the saltbush. Because of varied topography, unstable clay and serpentine rich soil, earthquakes and seasonal variation in rainfall, California is known for landslides. Hills that have a hummocky or pillowy appearance are great candidates to suspect as being the toe of landslides. This photo was taken from Highway 58 west of McKittrick. It shows landslides on grazing land that form lower slopes of the Timblor Range. Note the similarities of landform appearance with the previous slide. Interstate 5 at the southern end of the San Joaquin Valley was built through a cluster of landslides. The highway has been retrofitted with a drainage system that siphons water away from unstable land. At the lower right of the photo, you may be able to see northbound trucks on Interstate 5 descending the grapevine. At the south end of the valley, Wheeler Ridge is an important landform to California's water distribution system. Wheeler Ridge, like Elk Hills, is a surface anticline, a fold that has been growing for 400,000 years. North and south directed stresses in the Earth's crust are causing hills and mountains to elevate on both sides of the nearby San Andreas Fault. This aerial photo from 1957 shows the ridge has multiple gaps in it. The most prominent notch, shaded from the sun, is a wind gap through Wheeler Ridge. This gap is a remnant creek bed. As Wheeler Ridge elevated, the north flowing creek was deflected to the right or east, beginning 60,000 years ago, leaving Wheeler Ridge high and dry. Wheeler Ridge continues to rise one to two inches every 10 years. The wind gap in Wheeler Ridge gave builders of the California aqueduct an opportunity. Pipes now transport water uphill to the south, opposite to the creek flow direction. After climbing 518 feet, aqueduct water flows via gravity to the Edmonston station. The photos show aerial and satellite views of the plant and aqueduct. The Wheeler Ridge aqueduct incline is easily visible from two freeways, Interstate 5 and Highway 99. Geologic processes are dynamic. In California, they continually change the landscape. The varied geologic features of the Southern San Joaquin Valley make it an interesting place to observe California's recent geologic history. Thank you for viewing this video and thanks to those folks who assisted in making this presentation. Look for other videos regarding Kern County's geology and mineral history. We invite you to visit Buena Vista Museum of Natural History in Bakersfield, California, or visit our website, www.buenavistamuseum.org.